Hello, and welcome to the Wade Borth Podcast. I'm your host, Wade Borth. And in every episode, my goal is to get you to think differently about how money works and ultimately to empower you to take control of your money and your personal financing system. Wealth is an exercise in imagination. So my mentor and the gentleman that wrote, this little gentleman out of Birmingham, Alabama, wrote a book called Becoming Your Own Banker, uh, which is the infinite banking concept. And his name was Nelson Nash. And Nelson used to always tell me, used to tell everybody this, not just me. He used to say that wealth is an exercise in imagination, logic, reason, and prophecy. Now, I've talked about this on other podcasts, but I don't know that we've really delved into this idea that that wealth is an exercise in imagination. What does that mean? If you just take a step back, it, it makes complete sense once we'll talk about it, but until somebody can shine a light on or turn a light on in the room, it's always very dark. But once we turn that light on, it's going to be self-evident what it means. And so this idea that wealth is an exercise in imagination, let me give you just an example of what that means. Let me just kind of talk about that. If we go through life with really just no thought about where our money's going, what it's doing, and we've and nobody's challenged us to think a little bit differently, then what results are we going to get? Where are we going to end up? We're going to end up where the masses are ending up. And what we're seeing right now with people, the baby boomer generations are retiring, you know, is it 10,000 people a day or some crazy number like that are retiring, and they're living in fear. And they're living in fear because the results that they were promised maybe aren't showing up. And so the question is, do you want to continue to do the same thing or do you want to start practicing a little imagination? Do you want to end up in the same spot of fearfulness uh, that a lot of retirees are getting to once they retire, once they hit that age 65 or 70, whatever it is? But the sad part about that is it's really too late to go back and change it. And we can make improvements, but we lost that time. And this is the real strength and the power of time is that the sooner we start, the better off we're going to be. But it's never too late to start. And so what I would ask you to do, I would ask you to, you know, close your eyes and say, what have I done from an imagination standpoint to improve my financial position? Am I just going along and accepting what everybody's telling me and then applying those or just, you know, letting the financial world take control of me? Or am I taking control of the financial world by using my imagination? What I mean by that is, when was the last time you thought of something creative? When I say creative, I mean, it's not illegal. It's not really anything out of the boundaries. When I say it's creative, it's different than what your parents maybe told you or different than the guy in the water cooler at work has told you. And how you finance something or what you're buying or what you should be doing. I mean, there are people doing this all the time. And just a real simple example is this idea of do I take my money and, and put it in my 401k or say, hey, I'm going to take that money. I'm going to put it in an account and I'm going to start using that money to buy real estate because I see better cash flow, better certainty and better results by using real estate versus a 401k for my retirement income. Now, again, that's a little bit unconditional. Some people, it's very, very unconditional. But again, it comes back to, are you going to be comfortable with the same results that your parents and your grandparents and those people that are hitting the retirement age are having today? And that's really what, what we want to have people start engaging their brain in. Because if you don't have an imagination, if you can't think beyond one year, two years, five years down the road, then you know it's hard to get to a location. You're never going to a location you need by drifting. You're never going to drift to a desired location. And so what we want you to do is start thinking about, is there better ways to do things? I've heard a lot of people say, well, infinite banking, if that was so popular, why isn't everybody doing it? I'm like, there are a lot of people doing it. They've been able to engage their imagination. I had breakfast with a gentleman today that has used his imagination and he's really starting to develop that, but he's used his policy for multiple things that he said, I never would have used it for had I not had it. You know, that's the crazy part. He's like, I'm using for things I've never even imagined. I mean, this is how powerful this is, is that you're using a tool that you put together in a process that we've talked about and we refined over time to get to a place that you never even imagined existed. And that's the real benefit of this is that uh, once you have it and once you start engaging it, it's going to take you places that you've never thought before because you've never been challenged to think like that before. We talk about this in a lot of different blogs, and you've heard me say this many times. Fight that conditioned thinking. We're conditioned to think by 20 channels on the TV that are financial channels or financial entertainer channels or whatever it might be. We've been bombarded with messages of put your money with Wall Street. Why? Because they make money there. It's not that you make money there. Put your money in the bank. Why? Because they make money. You don't make money. Again, so when we start talking about you taking control of the banking function or 
you know, don't put your money with Wall Street, put it with your street, you know, put it on your street. In some worlds are very controversial ideas, but people that have true wealth understand this and have been doing it for years. So all I would say is there's an old adage that success leaves clues. Look at people that have wealth. How are they getting wealthy? Are they doing it by doing everything conventional? Or are they doing something that's a little bit different because it's had some imagination? So I would just start asking, you know, we did a blog a while back in a podcast that talks about ask the right questions. A, I would say start by asking questions. A lot of people don't even ask questions. They just blindly follow whatever somebody's told them. But first start by asking questions. And then the next part is read our blog. Go to sagewellstrategy.com. Hop on the blog page and, and do the search. that says ask the right questions. What are some of the right questions? Now, we have a ton of them, but in that blog itself, one question we ask is, does this align with our values and do we have control? You know, those are two questions that we want to ask all the time. Is what I'm doing financially in alignment with my values and what I want to accomplish? And the other one is, do I have control of my money? Because if you don't have control of your money, then you're really not the person that is going to make the ultimate decision if this is going to work. So and then the next question you might want to think about asking is, who's controlling the financing in my world? If you don't control the financing in your world, who is? If you're not controlling the financing in your business, Who's controlling your business? Because if you don't control the financing, you're not controlling your business. So the person that typically has the ultimate say over your business is the person that's in control. And a lot of times that could be the bank. So are you putting yourself in that position to take control of financing in your world, in your business? So kind of leave you just with a thought about that. I would love for you to, to kind of just give that some serious thought. Find a quiet place in your house, your business, wherever it's at. You're at the lake or whatever it might be. And sit and think about where do you want to be three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? What does success look like? And then say, what am I doing today that's going to get me? Are the things that I'm putting in place now, is it going to get me? Is it going to get me to a place of scarcity so I have to live kind of retirement paycheck to retirement paycheck? Or is it going to give me the ability to be free and have some certainty and security that I want when I go out at age 70 or 65 or 80 or whatever it might be? Give that some serious thought. If you're happy with where you're at, that's fabulous. There's not a lot of people that are. But if you're not, have a conversation. Give me a call. Hop on my website, book an appointment. Wade at Sagewell Strategy. And we'd love to have a conversation. It's like, how do we get to where you want to be? Not where somebody else is telling you should be. And then with that saying, well, in your imagination, what would you do? Or what can we do differently to make that happen? And a lot of times it's a very simple exercise. Like, well, if you've tried these three things and not working, there's a million other things out there, but we've never been exposed to it. And, and our imaginations are just like any other muscle. If we don't exercise them, if we don't put them to work, they're weak. And they're not going to perform the way we want them to perform. So it is a an exercise imagination. And I think it's important that you, you exercise that imagination on a regular basis because you, you will attain your dreams. And if your dreams are small and subconsciously you think, hey, I don't want to get much at retirement or when I'm 60 or 70 years old, that's exactly what you're going to achieve. So we want you to achieve as much as possible. We want you to dream big, and we can help you achieve those by, by thinking a little bit differently and applying some different strategies. One of them, obviously, is taking control of the banking function in your lives to where you're not having to work for your money. We're going to take you from making all this noisy money where you're doing in your everyday life to we can take you to this position of, hey, my everyday life was very noisy. I had to work and so on and so forth, and now we want quiet money where my money's working for me on an everyday basis while I sleep, on my vacation, I'm out fishing, my money's always working for me. And that's going to take you to the place you want to be. So think big, have a big imagination, and find different ways to make that happen. Again, they don't have to be outlandish. They just can be the observations that you have about these people are wealthy. What are they doing to become wealthy? And then maybe I'll start using some of those same methods because, again, success leaves clues. Let's pick up on those clues. Let's be inquisitive. Let's be curious about how they got there and then start applying some of those methods to to our own financial picture and along that way you know give us a call we'd love to be able to empower you i don't want to be a gatekeeper for you so i want to empower you to grow with your imagination exercise it and then give you a couple of ideas give you some guidance about how we can make that happen for you so again free your imagination and in, in regards to growing your wealth and think big exercise that imagination engage with somebody else that's there to understand that hey he's in the same boat as i am i was in the same boat as you were and i can just tell you if you don't think big you're going to get exactly that you're going to think small and think abundance i want you to think in abundance right i want to think i want you to think in prosperity i want you to think in this prosperous mindset and when you start doing that, 
all these different ideas are going to start to come to you how we can make that happen. So again, give us a call. Love to have a conversation with you about this because it's your life. We need you to live it. We need your imagination. We don't need somebody else's imagination how they expect you to live your life. So thank you. If you're enjoying this podcast or know anyone else that might be interested, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and please leave a review. This will help this podcast reach and help more people by ranking higher in searches and ultimately help more people get out of financial bondage. And don't be afraid to share this podcast with your friends and family. We can be easily found on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 